since 2002. We have created excellence together. Welcome to Ring of Honor Wrestling. Honor is real. Two of the very best in the world to lock horns with the ROH world title on the line as the American Dragon, Brian Danielson, returns to ROH competition against James Gibson. Joining me at this time once again on commentary, Jimmy Bauer. Oh, you know that I had to be in the broadcast booth for this match. You said it correctly, two of the very best in the world. And what a great sight scene, Brian Danielson back in the ROH ring, shaking hands, because don't forget, last time we saw him, he refused the handshake, and he walked out of Ring of Honor. That being nowhere to run in May, since that time he went to Europe, got his head together, he's back, he's clean cut looking, he's got his head on straight, and he wants that ROH world title. He regained his focus, he learned to use a big disposable, and he's back here in fighting shape, going after the title once again. A lot of people are questioning why is Brian Danielson getting this world title shot tonight? Well, simply put, he is one of ROH's founding fathers. He has been in some of Ring of Honor's greatest matches. He has defeated all the big names in Ring of Honor. He deserves a world title match. And most importantly, Brian Danielson said the only way he was coming back to Ring of Honor was to get his shot at the world title. That is all he wants to do in Ring of Honor right now as he twists that arm of James Gibson. Of course, his last title shot against Austin Aries, who dropped the title to CM Punk, and James Gibson winning that championship from CM Punk in Dayton, Ohio at Redemption. And now it's Brian Danielson returning after a hiatus to go after the championship, this time around the waist of James Gibson. Danielson has even gone so far as to say that there's really no reason for him to be in ROH unless he is world champion. So he is focused on that belt. James Gibson, on the other hand, is in ROH on borrowed time as we see Danielson trying to reverse out of that. Bridges back, holding onto the wrist lock is Gibson. Saw Danielson going for the drop kick and got out of harm's way using his brains on that exchange. As I mentioned, James Gibson on borrowed time here in Ring of Honor. He is heading back to WWE, but not until he loses the Ring of Honor world title. As you hear this crowd now come up, what an atmosphere we have here in Long Island. Now, after he won that championship, James Gibson let the entire locker room, as well as all the fans know, just how much it means to him to represent Ring of Honor as the top wrestler in the world. And he is going to be a fighting champion. He really doesn't even have to be here tonight. I mean, he could have left Ring of Honor. He has a nice, cushy contract with WWE, but he is here because the Ring of Honor world title means that much to him, because he has that much pride in what the Ring of Honor world title means. He wants to be a great Ring of Honor champion, as you see Gibson trying to cross-face there, or Danielson trying to cross-face Gibson right there, Gibson trying to fight out of it. Gibson has said that he felt that his career was rejuvenated by coming to Ring of Honor and going at it with some of the very best in the business and really uh, upping his game uh, as of late. And uh, he's really gotten a chance to show what he can do as a wrestler, lengthy matches and very memorable matches. Many consider him to be the MVP of 2005 here in Ring of Honor. No limitations, and let's see if we get a clean break here. Yes, we do. Gibson and Gibson managed to turn that shoulder towards Danielson in an attempt to block the chop, and Danielson might have pulled back there. But we did get a clean break, and we have a handshake in the center of the ring. Two sportsmen going at it, and two crowd favorites here in ROH. James Gibson says he plans to be in Ring of Honor for a long time and defend that belt with pride. We've seen him take it to FIP in that class against Roderick Strong. Dragon Gate Invasion, 30 minutes against Cole Cabana, a classic title match there. He defended against his best friend Spanky, and in a three-way match against Homicide Spanky at Knights and Grudges too. He has been a fighting champion, an honorable champion, and he wants that to continue forever. Danielson able to take Gibson off of his feet with that shoulder tackle. Gibson trying to shake it off, gets back to a standing position. James Gibson is a guy that's overcome all the odds. He never quits, whether it's CM Punk busting him open, making him bleed all over the place. Gibson still fighting back to win the world title. This is a guy with no quit in him whatsoever. 
Of course, back at the Best of the American Super Juniors tournament, he wouldn't give it up despite a back injury sustained early in the tournament. It took his friend uh, Spanky throwing in the towel to cause him to uh, be eliminated from that tournament. And you see what the world title means to these individuals. Just the fact that James Gibson has committed to Ring of Honor to stay here as long as he is champion. The fact that Spanky ruined his friendship with James Gibson and turned on him to, to get a title shot before Spanky left for WWE. I mean, that's what it means to be Ring of Honor world champion. People sacrifice their bodies, their friendships, whatever it takes, even money to be here. Gibson does not have to be here right now, but he wants to be a fighting champion as he fights out into a headlock on the ring. And Brian Danielson was willing to jeopardize uh, regularly working for the company unless he has a chance to be the champion. It doesn't matter to Brian Danielson to wrestle on all the shows. He wants that title around his waist. It's not about money, as there you see Danielson connecting with the dropkick this time, which of course he missed earlier in the match. Going for the knee drop, and he connects with it. Brian Danielson in control. Snap there, takes James Gibson down to the canvas. Cruz fixes the arms into a pin. Attempt only two. Ring of Honor head referee Todd Sinclair right on top of the action. Danielson looking for new ways to stretch Gibson. Gibson on the defensive right now. Simply put, we've said it before, these are two of the best in the world competing for the richest prize in professional wrestling. Has that arm basically in hammerlock position, trying to force the shoulder down. Sinclair right on top of the action. Brian Danielson, who knows where his head was at earlier in the year. He was embedded in that feud against oh. Homicide and the Rottweilers. It's, oh, he was going for counter-stimulation early. Yeah, and as soon as Gibson realized that, he got his legs into the bottom rope to break up the attempt. And he must release the arms, and out to the floor goes Gibson. Try to regroup. Gibson rethinking his strategy. Of course, Gibson wants to go for that Tiger Driver, the front guillotine choke. Danielson, you have to watch out for the Dragon Suplex, the Regal Plex, Cattle Mutilation. Danielson just has so many weapons. She's been utilizing the airplane spin uh, quite a bit in the past year or so. Who will ever forget that airplane spin at the final showdown, the steel cage match against Homicide, the longest airplane spin in wrestling history. The most devastating airplane spin. It was able to earn him the victory in that contest. As Gibson back inside the ring, he's collected his thoughts a little bit, maybe changed up his strategy. And they're going for the Greco-Roman knuckle lock here. Chest to chest they go, down to one knee. Danielson powers Gibson back to a standing position. Trying to get the advantage as Danielson backs Gibson up against the ropes. Looking for the monkey flip, holding on to the knuckle lock still. Both men back to their feet, and Gibson gets the Northern Lights suplex, still holding on to the knuckle lock, gets a near fall, still their fingers interlaced. Back to back they go. Danielson lands on his feet, sends Gibson into the ropes. Tilt a world backbreaker right over the knee. Nicely done by Danielson. Gibson in a world of hurt after that backbreaker. Very, very appreciative of the skill of both of these men. And you notice Danielson not giving Gibson any time to breathe or leave the ring again. Danielson staying on the offensive, drops another beautiful knee. He's effectively utilized the knee drop thus far in the match. And now putting pressure on the side of the head of Gibson with that knee. And he is just driving that knee into the face of Gibson. Nowhere for Gibson to go. Right as he tried to work out of that position, Danielson grabbed hold of the head. Keeping control of his opponent here. That is what the opening minutes of this match have been all about, is control. And Danielson in command right now. He has Gibson at a seated position. His arms clasp around the head. Danielson back to his feet, Gibson as well. Looking to send Danielson off. Breaks free of the hole, step over by Danielson. And pulls him right down to the canvas, does Gibson. Trying to shake off the effects, and nurse that back injury. Of course, this match does have a 60 minute time limit and both these athletes working at a very methodical pace. So that 60 minute time limit could come into play. No, they know they have 60 minutes to play with in this matchup and they both uh, no stranger to lengthy matches. 
And they know how important a match like this is. The match where James Gibson won the world title at Redemption against CM Punk, that four-way that also included Christopher Daniels and Samoa Joe, that went over 50 minutes. And Gibson's last couple of title defenses were in the 30-minute range. Drives the elbow down onto the challenger. Lateral press by Gibson. Only gets two. Now the question is, what will happen to the loser of this match? Could this be Brian Danielson's last match if he does not win the world title? If he's so focused on winning the championship, uh, it could very well be his last match. I wouldn't be surprised to see him walk out again. I don't think he wants to be here without the world title. James Gibson, on the other hand, he will be at Survival of the Fittest next week in Boston, and if he is still champion, he will defend it against Christopher Daniels in the qualifying match. But after that, that would be it for James Gibson probably. See the abdominal stretch here applied by Gibson. Right in the center of the ring, nowhere near the ropes for Danielson to break it. He used to work his way out of the hole. This is simply a wear down hold by Gibson. He's trying to cause frustration to Brian Danielson. Back to his feet, hip tosses his way out of it. Goes to drop the elbow, but Gibson moves out of the way. Hesitates on the second elbow drop. He connects with the European uppercut. And that is sharp wrestling by Danielson as he is able to stop himself from dropping either elbow. Gibson probably thought he was on his way to the canvas and instead Danielson put on the brakes and hit Gibson with that European uppercut. Connects with another elbow. Both Gibson. these men definitely in great condition. Danielson, it's great, definitely has his head clear after everything earlier in the year. He's in phenomenal physical shape as well. Jockeying for position. Oh, he suplexes him all the way to the floor. That could be a turning point right there. That is very similar to the Austin Aries match and nowhere to run. Danielson falling hard to the floor in that match. It was a turning point in that match. Knee strike off the apron. Connects with the side of the head of Danielson. Gibson now getting aggressive too. He is not going to give Danielson any chance to recuperate. Both these men know how good their opponents are. They know that they have to stay on the offensive if they get a chance. Hard chop across the chest of the American Dragon. Gibson in control. Sends Danielson into the barricade once again. Danielson feeling the effects. Gibson making use of the environment around him, using those guardrails, that steel plate on the guardrail, slamming Danielson into it. Elevates Danielson and drops him right on the edge of the barricade. That's rib first right there. That'll make it difficult for Danielson to breathe. And of course, if you're in a front guillotine choke, it's already hard enough to breathe. Goes down across the chest. And pitches Danielson back inside the ring. Very smart wrestling from the ROH World Champion, James Gibson. Getting aggressive, taking advantage of Danielson on the floor, but then throwing him into the ring because you cannot win on the floor. Drives the shoulder into the midsection of Danielson. And again. He seems focused on that midsection, the rib cage right now. Now instead, let's see, what's he going for here? Right into the buckle, hard, sends Danielson all the way down to the canvas. Now it's Gibson getting very methodical, being very smart here. Perhaps both men being methodical so as not to make a mistake. No, oh, it's all on the line. You know, if Danielson, as you said, it could be his last match if he comes up unsuccessful tonight uh, in his quest to win the ROH title. And, and Gibson just wanting to defend that championship. We know how much it means to James Gibson to represent Ring of Honor. And he wants to continue that reign as long as possible. When you look at it, Danielson's basically spent every moment from May 14th at Nowhere to Run to now training for this title shot. Working his way back to his feet, he's got Gibson up on his shoulders. Uh, I thought we might have seen an airplane spin. Gibson, I'm sure he saw that coming as well. Was able to use his leverage, drives the back of the neck across the knee and gets a near fall to follow up. Quick leg drop with great force down across the throat. That extra velocity adds extra force and that's extra impact and more pain. Yes. Has, has him backed into the corner here. Danielson trying to fight his way out. Warm connects with Gibson. 
He fires back on Danielson. Down he goes. Danielson might be knocked out. All it takes is one of those swarm strikes to knock a man out. Gibson a little slow to follow up, although now he comes in. He connects with another forearm. Hangs him up in the corner. And out to the apron goes Gibson. Wrapping the legs around the head. Uh, this is an illegal hold right here. Utilizing the ropes, referee applying the count. And now Gibson getting very aggressive, working on the neck of Brian Danielson. He knows that Brian Danielson is a threat to the world title. He's gonna do whatever it takes to soften him up, even if it's just four and a half seconds on a hold like that. Drives the elbow down across the chin, and across the edge of the ring as well. Danielson getting, or excuse me, Gibson getting very aggressive here, letting that anger take control, using that anger to his advantage to give him motivation to work on Danielson even harder. Pounding away on Danielson in the corner now. Gibson with the chop. Next with another forearm. Uh, Dragon yeah. fights back. He's had enough. Chop across the chest. Kick to the midsection by Gibson, but Danielson with the chop. Back and forth they go. The intensity is picking up in both these athletes. Brian Danielson sent to the corner, uses the ropes. Back flips his way out of harm's way, connects with the kick. And Danielson in control now. He's got Gibson down. Great agility shown by Danielson, throwing a page out of the Tiger Mask playbook. Danielson can do it all. He proved he can brawl versus homicide. We've seen him out wrestle the best. We've seen him do lucha libre, Japanese style. Any style Danielson can do it, including those European uppercuts. Pulls him into the center of the ring, another European uppercut. Down goes Gibson. Grabbing hold of the leg of Danielson. He has Gibson back to his feet, set in the corner hard. Danielson comes charging. Running forearm strike. Pulls him out of the corner. Vertical suplex, slingshot suplex. Right to a cover. Gets his shoulder off. Tully Blanchard would have been proud of that one. A new trick from Brian Danielson. And now pulls him again to the center of the ring. Likes to use the surfboard. And it looks like that's what he's going for. If he can grab hold of the arms of Gibson. Gibson knows it's coming, trying to fight it off. Trying to keep that arm out of Danielson's reach. Drives the knees of Gibson down into the ring. Danielson countering Gibson's counter right there. Simple and effective move, driving those knees into the mat. He's like, you're gonna give me your arms or you're gonna pay the price on your knees. He's gonna be the victim of a surfboard before too long. Brian Danielson is determined. And here we go. Rolls back and elevates Gibson. Pressure put on so many body parts. Gibson saves himself and reaches the ropes. But the hole did do damage to him. That pulls at the shoulder joints, the elbow joints, the knees. Ligaments are stretched in the surfboard. And of course, those shoulder joints key for Brian Danielson as he likes to utilize the cattle mutilation to get a victory. This crowd split between Danielson and Gibson as we got an airplane spin. He's got him up. Could we see more rotations than he did against Homicide? Around and around he goes, taking the equilibrium away from James Gibson. And the fans counting along. And Danielson uh, letting go of Gibson before he loses his bearings, it looks like. Let's see if he can come off the top rope here. Or is he too dizzy? Likes to follow it up with the top rope headbutt. If he can get his balance. Having a little bit of trouble up there. He looks like he's set. The dragon soars, but nobody home. It took too much time for him to regain his equal.
equilibrium and get that balance to connect with the headbutt, and Gibson was able to move out of the way. What ring presence by Gibson to move out of the way. And he's got him down! Bridge! Oh, so close! So close right there, and the match coming to a conclusion. Only two. It is no exaggeration to see that you are watching two of the best wrestlers in the world go at it for the ROH World title. Front Ganty choke! Right in the middle of the ring, too! Todd Sinclair getting in there! Danielson's got nowhere to go, and what? He's trying to power his way out no of it! Way. Overhead with the suplex! What a counter! What strength, what conditioning! That looks like a simple move for you people sitting at home, but that took unbelievable strength and conditioning, particularly in Danielson's legs, to be able to flip Gibson over like that. Time off from ROH, training for his next opportunity to go after the world title pays off. As Brian Danielson, back to his feet, and so is Gibson, comes roaring, Gibson ducks. Tiger driver! It's all over, he hits it. Danielson trying to block, again the strength shown. And drives down onto the chest of Gibson. Up top once again goes Danielson. And he hits the headbutt. Second time's a charm, cover. No, Gibson able to kick out. Danielson made that early attempt to go for cattle mutilation in the opening moments of the match. He has Gibson softened up. Will he go for it again here? Looking to finish him off and earn the championship. Going for the dragon suplex, it looks like. Full Nelson broken. Waist lock. Standing switch. Up on the shoulders of Gibson. A victory roll, no! To the floor, all the way to the floor. Danielson holding on to the top rope. Skins the cat, brings himself back in. Oh, effortlessly too. Another testament to the conditioning of Brian Danielson. Just waiting for Gibson to get back to his feet. Out on the floor, Danielson hits the ropes. And comes soaring. Putting his body on the line in the quest to becoming ROH world champ. Come on, you got him. Come on. Oh, uh, he scored big with that tope. Both men on the floor. Of course, there are no countouts here at ROH, but if you're out there for too long, the ref can DQ you. And we have seen that happen in recent times, particularly in the low-key J Lethal feud. Look at that look of determination on the face of Danielson as he chops away at the chest of Gibson. Sending him into the guardrail, up and over he goes, right into the front row. Gibson used those guardrails earlier, and now Danielson is getting some retribution. Danielson removing that steel plate there, exposing the guardrail. Wrapping his arm around the guardrail to do damage to that body part, kicking away at the arm. Oh, uh, now it's forcing that arm right on that steel. Nowhere for that arm to go. All impact there. And drives it down across his shoulder. Danielson very focused and singling out that body part, the arm of James Gibson. Leaving him susceptible to cattle mutilation. Uh, the cattle mutilation does a lot of damage to the arm. But it, I don't think James Gibson would ever tap away the world title, though. James Gibson never says quit. We saw James Gibson survive the best of CM Punk at Dawson, bleeding on two occasions, still coming back to fight for that world title. And the only way Punk beat him the one time was by using the ropes. The second time, despite major blood loss, Gibson winning the world title. This is not an individual that quits. He's got Gibson back inside the ring, Danielson up top. This old drop kick connects, right to the arm. Yes, you notice that, pinpoint accuracy on the arm of James Gibson. And the crowd showing their approval and their appreciation for the American Dragon. And at the same time, if, if Gibson, we got a cover here. Way close to the ropes. Not even having to use the ropes to save himself. Able to kick out, but favoring that arm, holding it close to his body. If Gibson's arm is weakened, and it definitely is, he might not be able to use that front guillotine choke or the tiger driver. He definitely has to use the arm to uh, execute both of those. And there you see Gibson, up, or Danielson, a master of leverage right there. Had that arm trapped, drove down to the canvas, almost like a divorce court. 
into a cover. No, he gets his shoulder up. Forces the shoulder back down. Kicks out this time. Again, Danielson with the cover. Making Gibson have to fight to get his shoulder up. Several near falls. Kicks him over. Danielson making Gibson work there. Not giving him a moment to rest. Each one of those kickouts taking a little bit of energy away from James Gibson. We know that Gibson can go the distance, though. We've seen in his recent title offenses, particularly against Cole Cabana at Dragon Gate Invasion. Let's hear it for James Gibson. Danielson getting a little aggressive, maybe a little frustrated at this point. Maybe he's letting that anger and frustration come out, using it to fuel him. Well, we saw Gibson doing the very same thing earlier, using his own frustration uh, to his advantage. You can use that to fuel, fuel yourself. Danielson simply stomping away on the arm right there. Now look at... Staying on that arm, tying it up, putting more pressure on that body part. Of course, Gibson, uh, no stranger to the long matches. Danielson has had several in his ROH career. Well, I gotta point out right here, look how perfectly Danielson is, is working on that arm as he is uh, exploiting every single joint on that arm from the wrist to the elbow to the shoulder. He has leverage on all of those joints. Gibson trying to come out of the hole now, he is. And he had that right in the middle of the ring as well. Sends Danielson off, shoulder tackle. Down goes Gibson, back to his feet. Right back to the arm goes Danielson. Gibson sends him off, shoulder tackle. Takes him down, goes after the arm again. Gibson again sends him into the ropes, shoulder tackle. Down he goes, back up, back to the arm. But he gets him up on his shoulder and takes him down with the Samoan drop. That's exactly what James Gibson needed at that point. Every single time, Danielson kept going back to the arm. Every single time that he grabbed his arm, Gibson was able to send him into the ropes to try to keep him away from that body part. These two men so gifted. And it's so gifted that these fans don't know who to cheer for. What a tremendous atmosphere. Northern Light Suplex. Rolls all the way back. Going after that arm. And Gibson clasping those fists together for dear life. And hold on, what's he doing? Gibson giving up the arm. But he's got the legs of Danielson. He turns it right around on Brian Danielson, and, the victim. An absolute genius reversal from James Gibson. Danielson trying to inch his way toward the ropes as Gibson holds on to the legs. And you see the pain on Brian Danielson's face. He saved himself by reaching those ropes. The ball is back in James Gibson's court, though. Let's see if he can follow up. But you know that he is in a world of pain, particularly that arm. Oh, he's basically a one-armed man in this contest. But he does have Brian Danielson weakened, face down on the canvas. Both men feeling the effects of this battle. Gibson trying to rub that arm, get some feeling back going into it. Ease the pain a little bit. Danielson's center of the ropes. Gibson. Counters. He's got a two-stone pile driver positioning. Gibson trying to fight out of it. Trying to use his own leverage to block it. He does. He's got Danielson up now. What another great reversal. Two-stone pile driver. Wow. He's got Danielson laid out. Opting not to go for the cover. Instead, all the way up top goes the champion. Leg drop off the top, cover! No, Dragon kicks out! Forgetting choke in the middle of the ring! Sinclair into position, checking on Danielson! And look at once again the great conditioning of Brian Danielson! Powers his way back to his feet, drives the back of Gibson into the turnbuckles twice. You know, you have to wonder if that arm wasn't hurt, if this would have been the end of the match. Swinging DDT. Butterfly in the arms, Tiger Driver. That's he gets it. it. A beautiful combination from James Gibson. And a heroic kick out from Brian Danielson. 
These two giving it all they got for the ROH World Cup. Gibson now pulling out all the big moves. We've seen the front guillotine chip. So perhaps rendered ineffective by the injured arm. The Tiger driver, Gibson has to be wondering what's it gonna take at this point. These two men showing the fans what the game of human chess is all about. And, and Gibson looks like he's in control, but he's gonna be wondering, what do I gotta do next? No, oh, he's contemplating exactly what his next move should be. He drives the knee into the side of the head of the challenger twice. Make it three times, this time with the boot. Off the ropes comes Gibson. Another knee strike, but Danielson getting all fired up. And you look at that, he got the adrenaline going, but Danielson's still feeling pain. Trying to shake off the effects, absorbs the chop. Goes to the eyes of Danielson. Oh, Gibson off the ropes. Comes roaring with the forearm strike. I'm surprised to see Gibson use that thumb to the eyes. That was desperation. Danielson now with Gibson. Pulling him back up. Maybe looking for the dragon suplex here. Breaks the full Nelson. Drop kick to the lower back. Sends Gibson into the turnbuckle. Dragon suplex. Bridge. He's got it! Cattle mutilation cinched in! Will Gibson tap? And look at Gibson pushing himself forward, getting out of the hold. Another brilliant reversal by Gibson. He's still got his hands locked in though, his arms locked in. Tiger suplex for a two. Still holding on to those arms, maybe looking for cattle mutilation again. Now Gibson works his way back to his feet. Now Daniel Sandy. Uh, Gibson's on top! Uses the turnbuckles for leverage, kicks his way out of that into a cover, and gets a near fall. Danielson back to the arms once again. Gibson trying to use the turnbuckles again. Danielson tenacious going for that cattle mutilation one more time. And what's this? He just turned it on. Uh, Crossface chicken wing! I didn't see that coming. Wraps his legs around the body of Gibson. Right in the middle of the ring, crossface chicken wing. That's all pain right on that arm of Gibson. Gibson tapped! Brian Danielson has won the title! purposes, Lance Storm is retired as an active wrestler. He's been training wrestlers up in Calgary, but now he has seen that Brian Danielson is one of the very best in the world. He's seen some ROH DVDs, he's seen what Brian Danielson is all about, and that it would be a test for Lance Storm to even get in the ring with him. Whether there was a title on the line or not, he realizes the talent of Brian Danielson, and he wants to test his own skills against the best in the world. Going for the drop kick, but he saw that coming, and not tonight. Lance Storm gets out of the way. Veteran right 
<laughs> Lance Storm saw Danielson. Obviously, the 10 weeks that Lance Storm has spent training for this comeback, he has watched hours and hours of tapes of Brian Danielson. He saw that drop kick coming and was able to avoid it. Moving on to the wrist lock, and Jimmy Bauer making his way into the broadcast booth. What an atmosphere we have here, guys. I just had to stop by the booth to say hello to everybody. Lance Storm, what an honor to have him come out of retirement to wrestle here at ROH. He attended the Steel Cage Warfare show back in December, loved the atmosphere, saw Brian Danielson wrestle, wanted to compete against him, wants that world title. Of course, Lance Storm was in town in December to do an edition of the Straight Shooting Series. That shoot interview now available at ROHwrestling.com, and it's a great one. And wow, I mean, I, I just, my, it's just unbelievable here. 1,700 fans, Lance Storm out of retirement, and I'll let you guys take it away from here. You can see that Lance Storm uh, got the itch once again. It's sort of like the ho Hotel California. You can check out, but you can never leave. You can never really leave the wrestling business or quit. It always brings you back, and the competition is what brought Lance Storm to Ring of Honor. He just got slapped in the face by the world champ. Brian Danielson showing absolutely no respect and more importantly, no fear of Lance Storm whatsoever. Brian Danielson is supremely confident. This is gonna be no different than any other Brian Danielson match where he likes to set the pace of the match. He likes to dictate the pace. And uh, he's gonna try to do the very same thing regardless of all those credentials that Lance Storm has going into this important battle. Storm with the front face lock on Danielson after he elevated him off his feet. Dragon able to get back up. Trying to drive Lance Storm to the corner, but Storm able to turn and drive the champion of the corner. Todd Sinclair looking for a break. And a slap to the face. A little payback for Lance Storm. Well, he's not going to put up with the attitude of the American Dragon in this matchup himself. Brian Danielson may be the world champion, but Lance Storm is the veteran, and he wants to dictate the pace of this match just as much as Danielson does. Lance Storm has been in this business for 16 years. It's going to be very difficult for Brian Danielson to get in his head. Nice reversal by Storm. Right back to the hammerlock. Keeping the champion chest first down on the canvas and driving the knee right into the arm as well as the back. This is going to be as good a technical bout for the ROH world title as we have ever seen. These are two guys who can absolutely go in the ring. Hammerlock into a cover, able to get a near fall. Danielson, though, right back to his stomach. And Brian Danielson has been such a great world champion for Ring of Honor, really changing up his style, utilizing a variety of different finishing holds to gain the victories and retain that title against many opponents in there. He was finally able to connect with that drop kick that Lance Storm was able to avoid just moments ago. He sat down to get out of that hammerlock and connected with the drop kick right on the chin. Snap bears him over. Danielson to the corner. He drives the point of the knee right to the jaw. Just recovered as Danielson doesn't hook the leg. Lance Storm able to kick out. Face lock now by Danielson in the center of the ring, really cinching down on it. No. Keeping hold of the head of Lance Storm, trying to work his way back to his standing position. He does. Danielson still holding on to him. Into the wrist lock goes Lance Storm. Forearm connects. And sends him off the ropes. Nice drop kick from Lance Storm. Sends Dragon all the way to the floor. And there you see Danielson doing what he does early in a match when he gets in a little bit of trouble. He makes his way to the floor. Trying to stop the momentum. And look at the bounce still on the chest of Brian Danson. He is never going to get rid of those courtesy of Roderick Strong. Last night, his chest was just obliterated by Roderick Strong. And look at those welts. Checking the chicklets is the champ as he got caught with that drop kick right in the mush. We well, want to talk about what a great champion and a fighting champion the American Dragon has been. I mean, he's taking on one of his top challengers in his wrestling career in Lance Storm, as now the referee uh, checking on the grill of Brian Danielson. Uh, you know, taking on one of his top challengers ever in his career here tonight after going nearly an hour against Roderick Strong last night. You've got to know that his body is the worst for wear. He's had less than 24 hours to recuperate from the beating that Roderick unleashed on the champion last night. While Lance Storm has had 10 weeks with one purpose in mind, training to come back to win the ROH world title. 
And what about what we saw earlier between Samoa Joe and Brian Daniels? And you better believe that Joe is keeping an eye on this one. He's now powered down to the canvas with the Greco Roman knuckle lock is Danielson trying to maintain that bridge as Lance Storm tries to break the bridge, but Danielson maintains it. What strength in the neck of Brian Danielson as he supports all 220 pounds of Lance Storm. Monkey flip when Storm lands on his feet. Still with the agility, Lance Storm. And another standoff. Oh, without a doubt, he hasn't lost a step. Time off or not, he's still the same Lance Storm that earned so many championships and made such an impact across the wrestling scene. In fact, after 16 years of all the bumps and bruises and the travels all over the world that Lance Storm has had to endure, this time off is probably the best thing that's happened to him in, in as much as making a comeback at this time. He's been able to heal the nagging in injuries, the bumps and bruises that he's suffered over 16 years, and he's probably in the best shape he's been in in years right now. Place lock takedown from the champion. Having hold of the head as well as one of the arms and driving the knee into the head of the challenger. And once again, Dragon Who's Relentless. And talking some trash, as he has been known to do, trying to get into not only the head of his opponents, but the fans as well. And now just riding Storm. Trying to jockey for position. Storm though grabs the arm, floats over into a cover. Danielson able to kick out at two. Reversal again by Dragon. Storm was trying to get a hold of Danielson's body, but he worked his way out of that position in order to grab hold of Lance Storm. As once again, Storm back to his feet. Danielson backs him into the corner. Sinclair again asking for the clean break, not going to get an elbow to the side of the head. Knife edge chop from Dragon. Pulls him out of the corner. European uppercut sends Storm into the ropes. Of course, Lance Storm getting this title shot as he signed one of the open contracts that the American Dragon sent across the wrestling world, saying that he is the best in the world and he's gonna prove it by taking on any challenger that will sign one of those contracts. He is starting to assert himself here on the challenger, slapping away at the back of the head. Now using the laces of the boots across the eyes, getting a warning from Todd Sinclair. He gets a warning, but... You know, it, it does the trick, it does damage to his opponent, but not phasing Lance Storm, still able to connect with the elbow and get the advantage. Face locked by Storm here, looking for the vertical suplex. Has him up, all the blood rushing to the head of Brian Danielson. Tremendous show of strength by Lance Storm here. And drops the champion down. Cover by Storm. Danielson able to kick out. And trying to ground the champion right now is Lance Storm. Half Nelson applied for no, keeping no, no. the chin lock as well. Putting pressure on the neck as well as the shoulder. Trying to wear down the champion. It's forcing Danielson to carry all of his weight too as you see him leaning down on the back of the neck as well. Danielson though trying to alleviate the pressure. Turns away from Storm and able to get to his feet. And the fans of both of these wrestlers voicing their support here in Chicago Ridge. Driving a shoulder right into the midsection of Lance Storm. And yet again. Hard chop across the chest. And a headbutt to follow up. Lance Sinclair all over the champ trying to get him out of the corner. Just choking away with the boot as he counts. Brian Danielson obviously knows the rules. He has until five. It's an illegal move, but he does have until five to break. And he's taking full advantage. Once again, choking away with that boot. Storm in the corner. Danielson's going to bring him out. Reversal by Storm. Danielson, though, elevates himself up and over. That rolling half crab of Lance Storm as soon as Brian Danielson realized that he was falling victim to that hold, he quickly scurried to the bottom rope to force a break. That could have been it. That could have been the end of the match and the end of Danielson's title ring. Storm gonna follow him out to the floor. Hard forearm shot. Not giving the champ a chance on the floor. Knife edge chopped to the chest by the challenger. Not giving the champ a chance to dictate the pace of the match. He went out to the floor to regroup, but Lance Storm took the action out to the floor himself so that he can set the pace as he's chopping away at that chest himself. 
Danielson trying to roll back to the ring. Storm right after him, though, not giving up this advantage that he has taken here. Sends the champ to the buckle one more time. Follows him in with a clothesline. Nowhere for Danielson to go. Face first on the canvas, turned over to a cover. Able to kick out. Dragon still in this thing. Lance Storm looking to follow up as he pulls Danielson away from the ropes, back toward the center of the ring, and now into the corner. Oh! A fetch chop from Storm. Elbow to the midsection by Danielson, trying to buy some time, but Storm staying right on him, forearm to the back of the neck. Jackson into the corner, Irish whip reversed. Storm into the buckle, Danielson charges into the elbow. Lance Storm to the second now. Danielson charges it, connects with the forearm strike, knocking Lance Storm off the ropes and overweight down to the concrete. Challenger crashing on the concrete floor. <laughs> Tremendous velocity and impact from Danielson on that forearm, knocking him all the way to the floor. And now it's Danielson making the choice to go out to the floor himself as the challenger is out in a weakened position on the floor. And now some payback chopping away at the chest of Lance Storm. And sending him into the barricade. Another knife edge chop from the champ. You know, 10 weeks of training for this matchup. That's something you can't train for. Getting sent face first into a steel bar uh, excuse me, back first into a steel barricade by the world champ. That's gonna take something out of you. Look at the confidence and the determination on the face of the champion. As he takes the action back inside the squared circle. And Storm on his back cover, but he's able to kick out. Danielson setting him up, driving the knee right to the small of the back. Trying to soften Lance Storm up here. And drive, grinding the knee to the lower back. And a third time. Keeping the challenger grounded off the ropes comes Dragon. It's elevation, and driving the knee into the back once again, or pulling back on the face no, now. No, no! Pressure put on the neck. No! Demanding the Lance Storm tap out here, but he's not giving it up. Storm trying to get to his feet, alleviating a lot of the pressure. Drives the elbow to the midsection, trying to free himself. Danielson, though, still hanging on. Storm off the ropes. Close line down by the champ. Well, his momentum cover, but able to kick out his storm. Again, knee placed right in the back. He's been softening up that body part. Also doing damage to the shoulders now, pulling back on the arms of Lance Storm. In a world of hurt, and he's got in the middle of the ring, nowhere near the ropes for Lance Storm to force a break. I've seen this before. This is a move that Danielson likes to use to soften him up for the cattle mutilation. Storm, though, up to his feet, trying to power his way out. But Danielson able to hang on. And a mule kick right on the chin. Great agility shown by Lance Storm right there. Able to connect with the kick and save himself. Danielson, though, up first. European again rocks the challenger off the ropes. Fires back with a form of his own, knocking the champion down. Trading forearm shots. European uppercut from American Dragon has Lance Storm down. And now hung up on that second rope, tearing away at the face of the challenger. Draws a warning from the referee once again. And now elevating Lance Storm, backbreaker over the knee. More damage done to the back of Lance Storm. Has a hold of the leg. Turns him over. Could be looking for the surfboard here. More damage to the back as well as the shoulders of Lance Storm standing on the knees. He's got the legs tied up. Shows the fans what he thinks of them. Very appreciative of the seven, 1,700 fans here in Chicago is the champ. Not time for the surfboard yet, according to Brian Danielson, as he just drives the knees of Lance Storm into the canvas rather than grabbing hold of the arms. Now maybe it's time for it, as he ties up the legs once again and now trying to fight for the arms of the challenger. Storm trying to fight it off, but Dragon's got him. Rocking back now. Trying to get full extension on the maneuver. Hot Sinclair right there asking him if he wants to give it up. 
Danielson keeping his shoulders off the mat. Storm though fighting his way. He's trying to free himself. Shaking his head no, and he can't break free, but Dragon changes it up and grabs hold of the chin lock with the legs still tied up. And now forms from Lance Strong trying to break free, but Danielson again tearing away at the face as the referee applies the count. Tremendous presence of mind on the part of Lance Storm, able to utilize those forearms. Danielson though going right back to the nose and the eyes. And the champ is extremely confident right now. He can't underestimate Lance Storm, and he can't give him too much time to dig down for some extra energy. Just stomping away now. Just measures him for the kick. Come on, Lance. They're all cheering for you. Dragon now just taunting him. The fans cheering for Lance Storm. Another disrespectful slap across the face of Lance Storm, and that's just going to fire him up. Exchange of forearms between both men. Again, Danielson goes right to the eyes of Storm, who connects with that kick. And that takes Danielson down. Both men feeling the effects as referee Todd Sinclair applies the double count. And now it's Lance Storm looking to follow up. Back to his feet, drops the leg across the back of the neck. Covered by Storm. Does not hook the leg, and the champ able to kick out at two. Back to their feet. Off the ropes goes the champ. Puts on the brakes. Storm is trying to go for a belly to back, it looked like, and it's caught with a suplex by Brian Danielson. Cover here. Again, come on, hook the leg, man. Only two. Still trying to get the pinfall, making him exert that energy to kick out each time. And again, trying to wear down the challenger, stretching back on those arms and placing the knee in the back. Sinclair asking, has Lance Storm had it up? Does he need to give it up? But no, he wants the world title. No. The reason he came back after that retirement, wanting to test himself against the best in the world, the one thing that's eluded him in his career, 16 years in this sport, he still wants the world title. He wants to make this match count as Danielson just digs those knuckles right into the rib cage. Now looking to follow up, sends Lance Storm into the ropes. Staying on his feet though is Storm, and Zagiri upside the head. That may be the move that Lance Storm needed to buy himself some time to get back in this matchup. You see him trying to shake the cobwebs here, trying to fire himself back up. Trying to get that extra burst of energy as the Lance Storm fans get behind him here in Chicago. Forearm strike connects, and again. Rocks the champ, sends him off the ropes one more time. Back elbow sends Danielson down to the mat. Pulls line from the left side, rocks the champ. One more time off the ropes goes Danielson. Leg lariat connects right on the chin. Cover, hooks the leg. Two and a half. Danielson able to kick out. Lance Storm needs to stay on the man. He's doing just that. Butterfly in the arms here. Tiger driver. Oh, but he only gets two. Danielson able to get his shoulder up. Lance Storm very focused and in top form here in Ring of Honor. And a head by Danielson, but he gets caught with a power slam. Puts the leg. Again, Dragon kicks out. Danielson at the mercy of Lance Storm at this point. In control of the matchup, sends the champion into the corner, and he goes through the legs of Lance Storm. Off the ropes. Powerbomb! Only two! Storm went for the round, and got caught with a powerbomb and a near fall. Line up the legs, looking for the bow and arrow. As he rolls back, has the hole cinched in. Danielson needs to worry about his own shoulders being pinned to the mat with this very maneuver but he is putting a lot of pressure on the back of Lance Storm once again. But he's hanging in there. He's still got some fight in him. Crowd trying to rally Lance Storm here. Driving the point of the elbow to the chest, trying to free himself, and he does. And another knee to the small of the back. Danielson has remained focused on the back of Lance Storm during the course of this match. Going for the regal plex, but blocked as Lance Storm fights his way out of that position. Oh, he's going for the crossface chicken wing. Storm trying to block that free arm, driving the elbow right to the side of the head of Danielson. 
Wants the turnbuckles in the corner. Super kick right on the jaw. Cover. Oh, two and a half. Danielson gets that shoulder up. Storm looking back at Todd Sinclair. He thought it was three. We're gonna capitalize once again, places the champion on the top turnbuckle. Lance Storm now, up to the second himself. Superplex possibly coming up. Can he get it? Danielson trying to fight it off. Shots to the rib cage. The sunset bomb blocked by Lance Storm who hung on but a forearm to the back by Danielson. And now he's gonna change it up, known for the super belly to back suplex. Storm in a bad way, nowhere to go but down from here, and Danielson has him in position. Looking out over the crowd disgustingly. Driving Lance Storm, next first, right in the center of the ring. And more damage to the back of Lance Storm with the impact of that maneuver. Danielson crawls toward him, rolls him over, cover. Storm kicked out, but Danielson staying right on top of it. Again, looking to lock in the crossface chicken wing. Can he get it this time? Storm to his feet. Trying to fight his way out of it. Trying to squirm maybe toward the ropes. If he can't break free of the hole, wraps his legs around the body. This could be it right here. He's got it locked in right in the middle of the ring. Storm trying to inch his way. Driving the elbow again, trying to turn his body. You see the hands clasp. Trying to maneuver his body toward the ropes to force a break. And his legs very close to the bottom row. And there we go, forcing a break of the hole. The sheer determination of Lance Storm to walk away from Chicago, to walk away from tonight's Ring of Honor event, wearing the world title. Gotta wonder, though, how much he has left in the tank after such a long layoff. Ring rust, obviously, not much of a factor early on, but the conditioning of Lance Storm, as far as ring time goes, as this match is well over the 20-minute mark now, Danielson up on the top, looking for the diving headbutt. If he hits this, it's gonna be all over. Danielson knows it's all over for the taking right here. Headbutt, nobody home! Lance Storm with enough presence of mind to move out of the way. Crash and burn Brian Danielson as Lance Storm tries to work his way back up to his feet. Double count administered by Todd Sinclair. And Storm's back up. Going for a pile driver, it looks like. The Jerry Lynn cradle pile driver, not enough to earn Lance Storm the world title. And Lance Storm just in disbelief that that was not a three count. What guts on the part of the champion here? Has the leg, looking to turn him over. There it is, the single leg crab, locked in right in the center of the ring. We can see the title change hands right here. Tiger suplex. Two, Only 
Only two still in the hold of the arms. Danielson refusing to let go. Cattle mutilation. It's time for your main event on this very historic evening, the first ROH event in the United Kingdom, and you will see a very historic main event for this card, a title unification match, guaranteed to see the first title change in Ring of Honor during 2006, as the world champion, the American Dragon, Brian Danielson, does battle with the pure champion, Nigel McGuinness. Amazing match we have on our hands here. Two men, two championships. Winner takes all under any circumstance. There will be a title change here tonight. The titles will be unified. Any sort of draw will result in a restart. There's no way around it, Dave. There will be one champion after tonight. The world title can change hands in this matchup on a count out or disqualification. As this is under pure title rules. Nothing pure about a slap to the face. Not at all. Nigel McGuinness here wrestling in front of his home country, his home crowd. Brian Danielson has spent a good portion of his career several years ago uh, wrestling in Europe, particularly in England. Whether you like Brian Danielson or you hate him, there's no denying that he's a fighting champion. To go into England to defend against Nigel McGuinness, and not under regular rules, under Nigel McGuinness's pure title rules. Well, both of these men feel that they are the best champion in Ring of Honor. Danielson has called himself the best in the world. Another open hand strike, a slap across the face. Nigel giving Danielson a receipt right there. The title unification challenges have been issued over the past several shows, and now we get the matchup between these two men. 
Nigel McGuinness won the pure title at the Dragon Gate Invasion event on August 27th of 2005, has successfully defended the title against the likes of Jay Lethal, Samoa Joe, Claudio Castagnoli, Tony Mamalu, Austin Aries, Christopher Daniels, Homicide, Roderick Strong, Colt Cabana, and many others as well. Brian Danielson, on the other hand, won the world title at Glory by Honor 4 from James Gibson on September 17th, 2005. Danielson has successfully defended the world title against such men as Pete Carino, Chris Saban, Robert Strong, Christopher Daniels, now Michimara Fuji, AJ Styles, Jimmy Rave, Alex Shelley, Lance Storm, Jimmy Yang, nice drop kick right there from Brian Danielson. Colt Cabana, Delirious Homicide, Sanjay Dutt, Samoa Joe, you name it. Brian Danielson has taken on all comers. Tonight, one man will walk away as the lone champion here in Ring of Honor. Dave, try to take a second to catch your breath after naming all the people that Danielson and McGinnis have defended against. It's an unbelievable list for both men, but there can only be one champion after tonight. So much at stake. Danielson going to work on the arm of Nigel McGinnis, holding on to the wrist lock. McGinnis, though, going forward, right back to his feet. Snapmare brings Dragon down to the canvas and a kick to the back. Danielson back to his feet, trying to shake it off. Nigel McGinnis asking him to meet him in the center of the ring here. And we talked before about the challenges that we've heard over the past couple of months. We've heard the challenges, we've heard the rumors. Honestly, Dave, I never thought it would happen. All the politics involved, to have a unification of the pure world title, I can't believe it's actually happening. And it's the one way to determine who is the better wrestler, who is the better champion between these two men. This is the third match between these two competitors. The previous two both took place in Cleveland, Ohio. The first and weekend of champions, night two. And the second at the last Cleveland event, Generation Now is the title. Nigel won the first matchup via countout after utilizing a chair as Danielson springboarded into the crowd only to get met with the chair and be counted out as Nigel called back inside the ring. Danielson won the second matchup with a small package. Nigel kicking away at the back now is Brian Danielson. Each man has defeated the other under the respective rules of the titles they hold. So it's got to be a psychological advantage here for McGinnis. He's already faced Danielson under pure title rules, and he's beaten him. Danielson going to work on the arm of McGinnis, something that Nigel likes to do to his opponents, work over the arm. Danielson twists away at the arm of McGinnis. Now brings the arm down across the shoulder, arm breaker. More damage done. I want to work on the shoulder as well. Arm breaker by Danielson. And a shoulder thrust. Takes down McGinnis. Keeping him down on the canvas and bending the fingers back as well as the wrist. And very close to the rope, trying to bait Nigel into utilizing a rope right here. Takes him down by the arm. And again, bending back on the wrist and the fingers. Stepping over and really wrenching on that arm. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. Pulling back down on the hand of Nigel McGuinness. Nope, nope. 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 McGuinness inching toward the ropes. Will he utilize a rope break right here? Standing on the side of the face of McGinnis. Angel works his way back to his feet. Danielson backs him up against the rope, sends him off. Connects with the drop kick. The world champion in control of the match. Only gets a near fall though. Danielson picks up McGinnis, butterflies the arms. McGinnis uses his power to bring Brian Danielson into the corner. 
But Danielson able to spin him around. Nice European uppercut by the world champion. Both of these men throw some very hard hitting European uppercuts. Very precise. Pulling McGinnis out of the corner, butterflying the arms. Butterfly suplex from Danielson. Going to work on the arm here. Will McGinnis use a rope break? He does. His foot reaches the bottom rope to force a break of the hole. Danielson has until five, and McGinnis only has two rope breaks remaining. Danielson now allowing himself to be distracted here by the crowd in Liverpool. Needs to focus on his men and get back on the attack. The first two matches between these two men have been absolute classics. This is becoming a true wrestling feud between these two men. Kick to the back and down across the chest with the arm. And we're seeing the final chapter of two classic trilogies as we just saw the third match between Ares and Strong and the Briscoe brothers. And now we're treated to the third match between McGinnis and Danielson. Driving down onto the arm of Brian Danielson. Without a doubt, this show focused on bringing the hottest feuds of Ring of Honor to the UK and having the championships defended here in Europe. Tomorrow night, we will bring you some unique matches with some of the international talent against the stars of ROH. Here's McGinnis, all the way across the ring with the European uppercut. Speaking of international talent, not only have we seen tonight some of the top stars from the UK, we also saw Sua and Go Shiyazaki from Pro Wrestling Noah of Japan. It'll be interesting to see what matchups they have tomorrow night. European uppercut from McGinnis. Danielson trying to stay on his feet and shake off the effects. Another hard European uppercut sends Danielson down. McGinnis in it to win it as always. Measured up his man and knocked him down with the European uppercut. And now opting to go for a cobra clutch on the ground. Tempting Brian Danielson to utilize the ropes here. Use up one of his rope breaks. Even allowing Danielson to inch his way toward the ropes just so that he might put it to use. While still doing damage with the hold. Danielson thinking about using that rope break. Trying not to. Trying to figure out maybe a different way to get out of this hold without using a rope break. Works his way back to his feet. for the strong clothesline. Step up into Gary from Dragon. And we've seen McGinnis many times use that Cobra Clutch spun into a clothesline, but Danielson had it very well scouted, was able to duck under and counter with that kick right to the back of the head. Danielson going to work on the legs now. Maybe looking to cinch in the Mexican surfboard. Fighting for the arms of McGinnis. Rocking backward. Instead drives the knees of McGinnis down into the mat. Up and down goes Danielson onto the knees and the hamstrings of the pure champion, Nigel McGinnis. And Nigel McGinnis is in obvious pain here. Kicking away at the back of McGinnis. Elevates McGinnis to the top turnbuckle. Danielson maybe looking for a superplex. All the way to the top goes Danielson. And McGinnis up top as well. Let McGinnis think about it. Superplex. McGinnis on his back, Danielson quickly to the top. Firing headbutt. Hooks the leg. No, he gets his shoulder up. Grabs hold of the arms. Cattle mutilation. Nigel. 
Nigel uses his second rope break to escape cattle mutilation. That is rope break number two for Nigel McGinnis. He has one rope break left. And then the ropes cannot save them any longer. And the ropes are in play for Brian Danielson. Brian Danielson feeling pretty good about it. He's caused McGinnis to use two of his rope breaks. McGinnis right back to his feet. Takes away Danielson's balance on the top. Tower London! And Danielson gets his foot across the bottom row. And now, what's Nigel doing? He's using cattle mutilation on Danielson. He beat Delirious with his very hole. Danielson struggling and reaches the bottom row. That is rope break number two for Brian Danielson. And that is the second rope break used by Brian Danielson. Both men with one rope break remaining. And you have to watch the 20 count on the floor in these matches held under pure title rules. On the outside is where things work to the advantage of Nigel McGuinness. He's proven say, to be a on. master when it comes to causing countouts. And he could win the world title tonight with a count. Putting on the brakes. And drives McGinnis face first into the table. And once again, McGinnis laid out on the table. And standing on the side of the face and the throat, with McGinnis just choking away. Look at the expression on the face of the champion. The world champion, that is. And you notice, Dave, that the chairs and tables here in England don't seem to break as easily as the United States. <laughs> oh, and now, Brian Danielson utilizing the table to keep Nigel down on the, on the floor. And this is a tactic that we saw Nigel McGinnis try to put to use against Brian Danielson in Cleveland to try to keep him down on the floor and utilize the count out to his advantage. Danielson now trying to use the same strategy against McGinnis. The pure title is in jeopardy. Can McGinnis get in the ring? He does. Both men back inside. Forearm shot from Danielson. McGinnis fires back with one of his own. Back and forth they go. Comes roaring. McGinnis ducks and connects with the Lariat. Hummer. Only two. Didn't hook the leg. Nigel McGinnis has got to be asking himself, what is it going to take to put away Brian Danielson and secure the ROH World Championship? And as I say that, it looks like Nigel McGinnis is bleeding from the mouth now. And stand in the corner, drop kick to the head of McGinnis. Right four! Cover! No, he gets his shoulder up. Danielson going for cat mutilation, changes it up, looking for the cross face chicken wing. This is how he won the world title from James Gibson. He's got the cross face chicken wing locked in perfectly in the center of the ring. Will Nigel McGinnis tap out? He's got the body scissors. This could be it, Dave. He's got it cinched in. Will McGinnis tap? McGinnis uses his third and final that rope break. The ropes cannot rope save Nigel McGinnis, Nigel McGinnis, and they are now in play for Brian no. Danielson. Look at the confidence on the face of the world champion. Champion may be a little overconfident here. German suplex throws McGinnis on his head. 
and perhaps Danielson could be setting him up soon for a cattle mutilation. There's no rope breaks left for Wiggins. Danielson certainly in the driver's seat of this match. All the way up top. The Dragon flies. But McGinnis gets the boot up and blocks the attempt of the diving headbutt. Both men feeling the effects. Double count administered by the referee. Who's gonna make it back to their feet first and get us on his knees? Danielson back to his feet. Get 
back inside the ring. The somersault poncho from Brian Danielson completely went down McGinnis, but somehow McGinnis manages to get back to his feet. Unbelievable. The blood pouring down his face. His eyes are glazed over. I wonder if he knows where he's at. Danielson tumbles over the barricade, back to the ringside area. Nigel trying to struggle, back over the barricade himself. There's no question, Dave, from the eyes of McGinnis. He definitely has a concussion, and I don't know if he's gonna be able to get back into the ring. And even if he does, what will McGinnis have left? See the blood of Nigel McGinnis on the back of Brian Danielson. Kicking away at McGinnis, sending him back over the guardrail. The count's at 12. Back inside the ring. 14. Guinness is well-being. He had no choice, Dave. Guinness was totally out. He was out. 